And uh, today I just wanted to talk to you about a few things. You know, last time I gave you guys some training tips and taming tips. Well, this time I just want to uh, give you guys some, you know, share some of my logic with you guys. And uh, you see the, the title, it says how to get the golden iguana. Before I start, I just want to say like, you know, the golden iguana, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, not a perfect iguana, but an iguana that has a uh, good temperament. Uh, he's, you know, somewhat potty trained, and he's uh, most all important. Most important of all, he's uh, healthy. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys some of my uh, logic that I use to uh, try to obtain a golden iguana. You know, and uh, you know, I don't want to brag on Rocket or nothing like that. You know, I'm too humble to just say he's the perfect iguana, but you know, he's come a long way. And how I got uh, him this way is doing these things that I'm about to tell you guys. So let's get right into it. The very first logical thing that I used uh, to get Rocket to the uh, calmness that he was, was uh, I thought to myself like, uh, you know, one day I, I normally wear black t-shirts, white t-shirts, gray t-shirts. And you know, that's most of my, that's my uniform most of the time. So, Back when Rocket was on his come up, you know, he maybe was around, maybe one, a little bit older. And uh, I had on like this loud blue t-shirt. You know, I wear blue sometimes, but like this was like loud blue. I think like the color of the, the Jordans or something, I don't know. And like I had a blue hat on to match. And uh, when I walked past his enclosure, he looked at me like, he didn't know me, like, wow. And at this time, I was still, you know, in the phase of trying to, you know, get him to the point where he is now. He was cool, but he wasn't quite there. And so I was like, you know, is he, like, do he recognize that, uh, you know, he don't recognize me? Like, do I look different because of the clothes I'm wearing? And then it dawned upon me, like, you know, that I might be on to something. You know what I'm saying? So I gave it a couple more test runs and, like, uh, you know, I changed shirts and walked by him. And you know, he was cool. So I was like, hmm. Then, it, then I got to thinking like, what's the number one thing, the number one difference between us and reptiles? You know, and I got to thinking, it's probably, they look the same every day. We can look different every day, depending on the clothes we wear. So, you know, I gave it a few more trial runs and I came to rec recognize that like, uh, Rocket can remember like, you know, different colors. And if you got an upstart iguana, that may be a good suggestion is to, uh, you know, kind of, I'm not gonna say get a uniform, but wear similar clothes every day when you're trying to uh, handle them, you know? So that way they won't, it's not like they're trying to get, they're, they're trying to determine if they know you or not. And you know, it'll be a little familiarity there. And uh, that may help them to be, uh, you know, more calmer with you. You know, again, this is just my logic. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you could go find this nowhere on the internet. If so, you can, but to my knowledge, is my knowledge, if that makes sense. And another thing that I logically thought of is, uh, you know, this is kind of common sense, but like, you wanna make sure that your uh, reptile is comfortable. You know, it's human nature. We get these new uh, pets and we wanna show them all to our friends and this and that. But we gotta think like when we first get these reptiles, you know, they're in a stressful situation. So we gotta make sure they're comfortable before trying to, you know, show them off or do whatever we wanna do with them. And uh, the way you make them comfortable is by letting them work at their own pace. Yeah, I said in the last video to be patient. This is kind of a play on that. But you let them work at their own pace. And, and, and perfect example, uh, I had some family come in town from out of state and they hadn't saw Rocket since he was, you know, small. And uh, this was like a few months ago. And they wanted to see him, you know, and I was like, cool. I know Rocket's schedule. I know when he usually come out. So I told him, all right, cool, come around this time. And when they got here, I don't know if it's because, you know, Rocket saw strange faces or he just, you know, some days he don't want to come out of his enclosure. He prefer to stay. Some days he out all day. But when they came, he didn't really want to come out of his enclosure. And you know, I had to tell him, I'm sorry, you know, I, I can't force him out of his enclosure. Like, I, for one, he grips to the mesh fence, and you know, I would have to sit there and pry each foot, each toe off 
you know, I'm not going to do that. But at the end of the day, yeah, I like people to admire him and adore him, but the most important thing is his health, is his health and safety. So you always want to keep that in mind. You want to make sure that your uh, iguana is comfortable. And like, uh, if you have to, if you force them out of their enclosure, you're going to always have to force them out. If you force them out, you're going to always have to force them out. That's because, you know, they're like, they're looking at you as a predator. You know, they not, they might not want to do that and you're making them do it. So it's kind of, you know, it becomes a tension in between them. But if you let them come out on their own, you will never have to force them out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's something you want to keep in mind. And the next thing is, uh, you know, picking up on the routine of your iguana. Like I mentioned, part of the, my ideal golden iguana is one that's potty trained. When uh, Rocket, again, when Rocket was on his come up, yeah, it was some rough times when, you know, I would let him out and he would, you know, uh, use the restroom. And anybody who has a, a big iguana, even a small iguana, you know, they do number one and number two at the same time. So it's it's a messy situation. So uh, what I realized is that uh, inside of his enclosure, he had a certain spot where he liked to go from. So now in the morning, I kind of don't let him out until I didn't see that he didn't, you know, use the restroom. Although he's a free roam iguana, you still got to monitor the situation just to make it easy on you and uh, easier for the, the iguana. Because if they go on the floor, most of the time, you know, they go, they're going to drag their tail in it. So that way, after that, you got to go clean them up or you, you got the possibility of salmonella spread out through your house. So yeah, you want to make sure you're observing them and you want to also make sure that uh, you're not making things too easy on them. Uh, I see a lot of enclosures on the web where they're just straight ramps up and down. You know, that's all cool for an older iguana. But when you got a young up and coming iguana, you want to, you know, get them some, some things to climb to make it uh, more nature-like and, you know, to develop their muscles. You know what I'm saying? That's what, uh, that's why my boy Rocky got guns right now that, you know, almost put me to shame. But, uh, yeah, that's just some logic for you guys to keep in mind, like I say, you know, it's not law, but it's my logic. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you guys can apply some of those, it'll help you obtain the, the uh, iguana that you guys are uh, hoping to have. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you can join the Golden Iguana Club. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, thank you guys for watching. Peace.